Welcome to the Bossier City Council regular meeting Tuesday, September 22nd, 2020. Have the invocation Jeff. Jeff Darby. by Mr. Darby. Uh, Mr. Jeff Darby and the Pledge of Allegiance by Council Member Timothy Larkin. Please stand. All right, Mr. Darby, you're up. Okay. Let us pray. Holy Father, we are thankful for this day that you've allowed us to see. We thank you for rest on last night. We thank you, Lord God, for your goodness. We thank you for your greatness. We thank you, Lord God, for your benefits that you gave and loaded us with. We thank you, Father God, for this city. We thank you for this state. We thank you for this nation. We pray, Father God, for those who serve this nation. We thank you for every public uh, body that served the people of this city and of other cities and of this nation. We pray, oh, Father God, that you would direct our steps, Lord, that we may walk before you and do the things that you have called us to do. We pray, oh, Father God, for those who are hurting, those who have lost loved ones and have lost uh, lots of things due to storms and fire and all the disasters across the nation. Father, we know that you are great. We know that your grace is sufficient. We pray, Father God, in the name of Jesus, that we turn to you and that we seek your face. And Lord, come to know what you have in store for us. For you are good and you are great. And we bless your holy name. It's in the name of Christ Jesus, I pray. Amen. 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 If you would please join me in our Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge, I pledge allegiance, allegiance to the flag of the United, United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call. Mr. Montgomery. Here. Mr. Larkin. Here. Mr. Irwin. Absent. Mr. Darby. Mr. Williams. Here. Mr. Free. Here. Mr. Hart. Here. Announcement, please. Bossier City Council meetings will still be streamed live at our website, bossiercity.org, under City Council section and Southern Link Channel 12, in accordance with Louisiana Revised Statute 42, 19, and the Attorney General's <coughs> Open Meetings Guidance. In order to meet quorum requirements, some Bossier City Council members may be involved in the meeting via telephone or video conference. If anyone is uncomfortable in coming to the meeting, they can email their com comments to the city clerk at bossiercity.org prior to the meeting and those comments will be read into record. We will also set aside some time at the very beginning of the council meeting to allow for a public comment on any agenda item in accordance with recently passed Act 302. You may call 318-549-4595 at this time to make your comments and you will be placed on speakerphone. You must state your name and address for the record and you will be limited to three minutes for your comments. We will allow five for an item and five against an item in accordance with adopted city council meeting rules. Please remember that this is not a question and answer session and that you must speak clearly and slowly so that we can understand you. Please no foul language or the call will be disconnected and you will forfeit your right to speak. I'm watching it on the thing. could have a motion to approve the minutes from the September 15, 2020 special meeting and dispense with the reading. And September and I'm Sorry. Sorry. I was kind of reading backwards. Oh, okay. <laughs> Sometimes, you know. 
Sorry. Um, and also approve the minutes from the regular meeting September 1st, 2020. So moved. Second. Any questions from the audience? Council, please cast your vote. Motion carries. Approve the, well, wait a minute. We've got uh, one add-on, please. No, sorry, we'll just add oh. it. We can just call him up during ceremonial matters. He doesn't actually have to be. No, I was thinking of the new business. Oh, no, sir, that's, you do, we'll do that when we get to Okay, that. you'll just, all right, when, when we get, we get to, to it. Yes, sir. All right, good. All right, so we have. We need to approve the agenda. Oh, I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> I make a motion we approve the agenda. Second. Both agendas, by the way, which were read. So, any questions from the audience? Council, please cast your vote. Motion carries. All right. We have a guest, Mr. Chris Eberson, here today to bring us up to date on the downtown hospital groundbreaking. Welcome, sir. If you could please take your name and address for the record. Yes, sir, Chris Elberson, and my address is 5925 Line Avenue, Suite 3, Shreveport. And um, I'm part of the architecture team working on the project. And um, the project, as you know, has kind of been delayed off and on. Uh, the most recent delays were associated with their concerns over COVID, but I'm happy to report that they plan on breaking ground within 30 to 60 days. They're currently finalizing their financing right now and um, some operating agreements. And I brought along a few um, photos and renderings and drawings just uh, to update you all on kind of where we ended up with the project. I believe we had shared with this group um, previously some initial concepts uh, and this is just a final rendition of the project so as you can see the project faces uh, Coleman Avenue and then they're currently reserving space around the building for future phases uh, you can see a clinic expansion and then uh, a surgery expansion on the side closer to the tracks back there there's also um, I think there's can't read that it's four point some odd acres uh, between the hospital and Bearcat Drive uh, that they're reserving for some other uses and one of the ideas is a hotel and another is a, a rehab hospital um, you can flip if you don't mind thank you and then these are these are just various images this is the front of the building now the view of a drop-off for patients in the front this image really shows this building in relation to the site and the, the tracks behind it. Another angle. And this is a floor plan that just indicates the different uses in the building. There's a central lobby, there's a, a surgery uh, component um, on the right hand side and then there's clinic space and imaging on the left. I believe that's that's it. So if you all have any questions, happy to answer if I can. If not, we hope to be breaking ground 30 to 60 days. Any questions from the council? No, sir. I appreciate you coming. That's for the pictures that I've seen of it, you know, so a little more in my head now. Yeah, it's an exciting project. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Appreciate your presentation. All right, committee reports, Ms. Fernandez, with the monthly financial report. Good afternoon, Council. I've distributed the financial report for August 2020. You'll see on page one, we're at 108% of revenue by fund. For the sales tax portion that goes to the general fund, we're at 104%. Page two are expenses by fund. 
and we're at 93 percent. Page three is our sales tax. Year to date, we're 0.4 percent better than prior year. However, if we back out the 2.4 in audit collections, we would be down 6.7 percent. Page four is our Manning report. We're at 667 employees compared to last month's 674, and we're 31 below budget. Finally, page five is our water and sewer report. For the month of August, we're at 714%. Year to date, we're at 115%. To budget, we're, uh, I'm sorry, 155%. To budget, we're at 119 percent, and the rolling 12 months, we're at 147 percent. Any questions? Any questions, Council? Thank you, Ms. Fernandez. Oh, by the way, I want to take the opportunity, if you wouldn't mind, I'll let you have the floor to um, recognize uh, Ms. Glorioso and Molly, if you yes. could. Please tell the public, the council. Uh, the second round for the CARES Act funds that we could apply for opened on September 14th. And Ms. Glorioso came up here at 640 in the morning, a Saturday morning, and got our application in as quickly as possible because we were told first come, first served. And we have been approved for an additional $1.5 My controller, Molly Haugen, she does a great job, and she gathered all the data for us. And we're actually ready for round three. They open the portal October 1st, and we'll submit for that. I love it. Good deal. Fantastic work. We appreciate it very much. And by we, I mean the, the citizenry, the taxpayers, the city council, everyone. All right, next, Mr. Rauschenbach, the city engineer with the monthly project report. Good afternoon, Council. Good afternoon. It's kind of a continuation from last month. We'll be doing these monthly. Give you a little update of all the various things we have going on in, in the engineering department. Uh, not on the list, but should go as probably my most exciting thing that happened over the last month is the hire of Mr. Clinton Patrick, who's sitting here, Clinton. Clinton is serving as the assistant city engineer for us and has really done a, a lot of work in helping me move some of the initiatives we have going on in the engineering department. So be looking to see a lot of him in the near future. Um, you guys have seen this slide before. We've got over $150 million in design and construction projects ongoing in the engineering department. $82 million currently under construction. Uh, six projects are in the design or bid phase. Uh, we've got bid openings today on some of those. 26 projects under construction and seven subdivisions in or nearing the construction phase. Walter will Bigby Carriageway, phase one. That's starting to take shape. Um, we're showing them behind schedule, and as if, if you recall the way I've done this, this is all based on completed and stored materials to date. So I just take that over their contract price and then look at their contract time and compare the two. Um, so it's as, it's as empirical as I can get, but there's probably some subjectivity to the schedule. They're making good progress out there. Uh, we've been out resolving a number of uh, various issues with the uh, businesses along that route to make sure when this thing opens, everybody's happy. Swan Lake Road, uh, coming along nice. I know many of y'all go up and down through there. They are ahead of schedule. It's a little misleading in that the construction time on this project is based on working days and not calendar days so with it raining seemingly every day you know there's not a lot of working days but they seem to be making a lot of uh, hay out there on that project's going well we just reviewed a pay application and submitted that so hopefully 
certainly by the end of the year, they will be done with that. Innovation drive phase two. We're showing them a little behind here again. This is based on progress pay applications and things of that nature. I talked to the contractor today. Uh, I'm pushing for a November 6th opening date. And of course, uh, with the caveat of weather, that seems to be very achievable. Right now, they're cleaning up, dressing up. Um, we need some dry weather to put the striping on the streets, all the street lighting starting uh, this week. So they're making good time on that. And I suspect that first week in November will be a happy day for many folks in Bossier City when that opens. Coleman Street, a um, couple of things have happened since last month. Uh, we expect the notice to proceed on this project to be issued by November. I've uh, been in conversation with AEP today regarding the staging of their uh, relocation of the power lines to make sure everything's ready to go for them. And this will be a nice uh, upgrade to this corridor, one for the high school, but also for the new hospital out there to kind of be in keeping with everything else that's going on down in that area. So expect to start seeing some earth being moved in November, especially Traco was a little bitter on that. Did you, did you ask them just for, you know, principal, uh, what, what end are they going to start on before they reroute buses and stuff? We, we'll need to make sure that we coordinate all of that with the principal. I'll get with you, um, Councilman Williams, and we'll discuss that in detail. Um, I, they'll have, they have a massive traffic control plan as part of that set of documents. And, you know, as with anything, those things are pretty dynamic once construction begins. But um, we'll make sure to... Yeah, we talked yesterday a little bit about it. Yeah, thanks for reminding me of that. The LPR camera project, it's hard to see, but that's one of the new LPR poles right there. We only have one left. It's pending DOTD approval. Um, all the other poles and service drops are in, and the police department can begin mounting cameras. This is at the foot of the Texas Street Bridge. Max Bayou repairs coming along nice. That's good. Y'all can probably see what's going on there. They're right on schedule. Um, even with all the beautiful weather we've had. So we're excited to see that go in. That's a much needed project and uh, your wicks doing that. They're doing an excellent job. Public works generator project I'm told will be complete Friday. Um, they're still working out a few little Mickey Mouse things between this generator and the one at animal control. Uh, but that project is coming to a close and they'll be done with that. This is the animal control facility um, starting to take shape. You've got the steel there on the left side of the building um, doing a lot of interior work, a lot of moving bits and pieces out here. They're still a little behind schedule, but they've been making up time. Um, so we're happy to see that. Tinsley Athletic Ball Fields, huge project. I don't know if you've been back there, over $14 million of work. Um, and every day there's, there's a lot of fun happening out on that project site. We've been working with Parks and Rec closely, uh, the contractor, the engineers, just to mitigate all of that. The biggest problem we're having out there is just the poor ground conditions and the fact that the vast majority of the project is all underground. <laughs> so it's, it's, been, uh, it's been a soap opera. We we're looking to the day that we will have everything done below grade and be coming up. They're doing a lot of stuff above grade to the batting cages are in, fencing, <coughs> things like that. Meadowview and Tinsley. Um, Tinsley's still under construction, right around 76% complete, and uh, Meadowview is, is done. So you can kind of see both of those there coming along really nice. Uh, East Bank restrooms, if you've been out there, um, this is a little bit of an older picture. They've got some more color and flash on it now. Um, they're on schedule. There'll be an issue on the agenda today to do a little change order to kind of uh, freshen up the plaza area to match a little more closely with the restroom. Field of Dreams restroom, um, a little behind schedule predominantly from all of the rain and, and, and other things, but it's starting to, to take shape out there. Jogging trail, this was an emergency project. It's complete. We got a couple of punch list items out there, but that work is done. 
uh, just have a little dress up to do in one of the areas and um, one of the asphalt patches we didn't like the finish on there so we're having the contractor come back and clean that up but that one's done Mike Woods Park this was on there last month um, construction will begin on this soon uh, once all the parts and bits and pieces are delivered out there and that'll fix this particular drainage issue that they've got going on carriage oaks this will probably be the last slide but this project's done the pipe was lined y'all saw that last month and you can see we we had to basically re i don't want to say rebuild but reconstruct that whole guard shack there but it's all good to go the folks in that neighborhood are very happy that that project is complete and then the private development we talked about, various subdivisions, um, Kane's Landing probably being one of the biggest uh, developments we have going down in South Bossier. Projects out to bid, we have the Melrose Drive extension. We open bids on that today. Highway 71 lighting, that's currently in design. East Bank Fire Station in design. The bird burn building is under construction. Uh, Highway 71 streetscape improvements we open bids today south bozier miscellaneous capital improvements those are in design stadium we talked about some stadium seat repairs at the century link that's done um, and we're working with the uh, women's veterans memorial group to complete the installation of that project a couple of just honorable mentions flood management we still need to meet with uh, ian snellgrove um, the levee board and Bozier Parish that's been postponed due to the hurricanes and weather and everything else but that's still on our radar to kind of get together and discuss the flood issues here in our area traffic engineering um, pending today's approval we'll be initiating a study of airline corridor Benton Road corridor and 71 south uh, we recently learned that DOTD has a moratorium on all traffic counts because of COVID so that's going to make things a little interesting at the start, but we're working with the various powers that be to get that uh, moved forward. And then property standards, most of y'all know, those guys are busy all day, every day, taking care of every fence and tree limb and blade of grass, you name it. Any questions? Questions from the council? Clinton, yeah, got, I'm sorry. After the meeting, I got somebody calling want to talk about something. I'll talk with you after the meeting. If that's okay, okay, sure. We could have Clinton come up and introduce himself, maybe. <laughs> Get used to coming up in front of the mic. <laughs> Good afternoon, Council. I appreciate this opportunity. Uh, I've been in the engineering field for about nine years now and uh, very excited about the opportunity to serve Bossier City to the Best of my abilities, and if you got any other questions or comments? No, sir. We just appreciate you joining the team, and look forward to working with you. Appreciate it. Thank you. <clears throat> All right. Next up, Mr. Justin Haydell with Manshack on the Walter O. Bigby Carriageway Phase One and Two. <clears throat> Good afternoon, Council. You've got my standard uh, update. Left it on your uh, tables there. Uh, again, it, the, the agenda kind of follows the schedule. Uh, I've got a commitment from the design team that the, they'll give me 100% drawings, not stamped, uh, no later than October the 16th. And I scheduled a three-week review period for us to kind of pour over the drawings and, uh, you know, the drawings are this thick, so it's easy to make minor errors that cause problems during bidding. So we want to try to eliminate some of those. We're going to uh, turn our comments back over to the design team on or before November the 6th. And then on November, the, give them a couple of weeks to clean it up, and then they'll have to stamp and seal the drawings and then we're going to uh, pull everything together, including the uh, front-end documents, the bid documents, and submit the plans and the contract documents to all of the uh, permitting agencies, which there are many. 
Uh, Union Pacific Railroad, good news there. They approved the uh, last submittal, uh, and now we're preparing the final submittal to UP, which they say it should take only a couple of weeks for them to get it approved. So uh, I'm hoping to make that final submittal to them no later than October 15th. Uh, utility relocations, we're making some headway there. If you look on the schedule, you can see all the different utility companies we're working with. SWEPCO had been making substantial progress on what they have to do, but uh, they've kind of left town dealing with uh, disaster zones due to Hurricane Laura and now Hurricane Sally, and they can't really tell us when their crews are coming back. So uh, I'll just have to keep an eye on that. Uh, AT&T, you know, they've committed to get everything done on or before February 17th. Center Point Energy, we've been working with them a lot over the last couple of weeks. And the last uh, piece of paper in your handout there is a drawing that shows what we have uh, come up with for Center Point to put in a new gas line to continue servicing their customers. This has to be done prior to construction starting. It, it's only a two inch gas line. Uh, so we've got it kind of going around the treatment plant. They're going to do the survey work and everything they need to do in order to develop the servitude documents and then we'll bring that to the city council uh, for approval, I guess, is the process, right? So uh, one of the items on, with center point is they're showing a very long time to get their permit from the levy board. So we're going to try to work with them to try to expedite that a little bit. Uh, they're, got to, they're going over the top of the levy. It's only a two inch line. So they put in the standard time frame that the levy board normally takes, which is six months, which I think we can get it done quicker than that. Uh, Conterra, they're out there working right now. Uh, Sudden Link, uh, the city attorney's office, Mr. Hall actually wrote them a letter to try to get things off center. And lo and behold, as of yesterday, we've gotten some movement from them. Uh, they've actually got people coming to town, I think next week, to uh, try to figure out what they need to do to get their stuff out of the way. Uh, Verizon, we're still kind of haggling with them a little bit. Anyway, the DOTD permits, of which there are uh, seven of them, we have submitted six of the seven permit applications. And the last permit application, which is what they call a project permit at LA3 and Walter O. Bigby, hopefully by the end of this week or early next week. So they will have all of the permit applications. Uh, don't know how long it will take them to turn those around. Uh, but regardless, you know, we've done what we can on our end. Uh, the levy board permit, which is a big one, Things kind of got held up there a little bit, and I, you know, we blame it on whatever COVID, but uh, we couldn't get approval from uh, the core to take the three additional soil borings I told y'all about. I think Mr. Larkin helped out and uh, got the levy board to agree to let us go ahead and proceed. They should be out there next week punching the holes, which is seepage analysis. They need that information to complete the seepage analysis that the core wants, so hopefully, uh, by the end of October, we'll submit that uh, and get the show on the road uh, with the core permit. So uh, a couple of other items here. Um, the lighting design for the roadway, we met with the uh, designer, Perlin Associates. Y'all approved the contract for them to do the lighting for the roadway portion. Kind of held a little kickoff meeting yesterday to get them started. Uh, and just to bring to your attention, there was a little sliver of land, additional property that was needed at the Green Acres Office Park so we could have a proper radius turn off of uh, Benton onto the uh, dedicated street into Green Acres Office Park. So Gordon's aware of it. Uh, David Valentine is working on the appraisal, so don't think that'll be a big issue. But uh, anyway. That's it. If anybody has any questions, I'd be happy to try to answer them. Complicated. <laughs> it's, a, it's a lot of moving parts. Looks good. Thank you for your hard work on that.
Thank you for allowing me to do it. Appreciate it. All right, unfinished business. Adopt an ordinance to declare certain movable equipment owned by the city of Bossier City as surplus to the city's need and provide for salvage and disposal according to law. Final reading. So moved. Second. Questions from the audience? Council, please cast your vote. Motion carries. Adopt an ordinance authorizing positions to be filled in the Bossier City Public Utilities Department as a result of a retirement and a resignation and to increase the salary range of the vacant assistant superintendent position resulting in a net neutral change to the operating budget. Final reading. So moved. Second. Questions from the audience? Council, please cast your vote. Motion carries. Adopt an ordinance to fund improvements to the Sun City and Eagle Bend pump stations at a cost of $170,000 to come from the Sewer Capital Contingency Fund. Final reading. So moved. Second. Questions from the audience? <clears throat> Council, please cast your vote. Motion carries. Adopt an ordinance levying ad valorem taxes on all taxable property within the limits of the city of Bossier City, Louisiana for the year 2020 and providing the manner of assessment and collection thereof. Final reading. So move. Second. Questions from the audience? One thing I'd like, Ms. Fernandez, you had the foresight and <clears throat> ability to develop that historical data on this tax as well, well as all the others. Is there a way we could put that on our website? Yes, sir. I'll do that. But just that for the record, this actually rolls the taxes back. Yeah, I mean, I, all I'm saying is so that there can't be any misconception or mis construed uh, ideas about what's going on in our philosophy I would like that to be on the website for the record yes, sir. that way any the, the media or anybody that wants uh, to see how things have been handled since 1978 it's like I've always said and told Mr. Hall for above for a long time that numbers don't lie they tell the truth so yes sir we'll get that done Thank you. Yeah, I'd ask if you have any questions from the audience. All right. Council, please cast your vote. Motion carries. Adopt an ordinance appropriating $500,000 from the Riverboat Gaming Capital Fund to hire Attackapaw At Services, Inc. to clean and inspect portions of Bossier City storm drainage systems and authorizing Mayor Lorenz Walker to execute the contract attached here to final reading. So moved. So moved. Questions from the audience? Council, please cast your vote. Motion carries. Adopt an ordinance appropriating $150,000 from the Riverboat Gaming Capital Fund to hire Urban Systems, Inc. to prepare a traffic signal synchronization study for North Bossier City along Barksdale Boulevard and authorizing Mayor Lorenz Walker to execute the contract attached to your two. Final reading. So moved. Second. Questions from the audience? Once again, uh, I think everybody want, knows why we're doing this. We want to assist in the movement of traffic, both in South Bossier and North Bossier, especially for those high peaks of time in the morning and in the evening. Um, we just to bring, give you a little more detail on the um, with DOTD and the moratorium on traffic counts that pertain to Phase Two 
as you well know, the governor moved into phase three, so we're awaiting a decision from DOTD um, relative to the fact that they can proceed with traffic counts. So uh, that came from the representative with this firm. So hopefully in the next week or so, we'll have an answer um, once this ordinance passes and the decisions made by the governing authorities. So. Our fat fingers are hitting the wrong keys. <laughs> We're good to vote. Yes, sir. All right, council, please cast your vote. Motion carries. New business. Witness opening of sealed bids for bid number P20-25 Streetscape Improvements, US 71 Barksdale Boulevard. Council, the engineer's estimate on this project is 1,600,000. It's funded from the 2019 sales tax capital budget. There are two addendums. The first addendum listed the attendees to the mandatory pre-bid meeting, revised the Louisiana form, PW bid form, provided changes to the specs and drawings. Addendum two, did pedestrian lighting prior to approvals, and that's it. First bid is from Ernest Contracting, LLC. They acknowledge the addendums. The bid bond is included. It's for $2,299,425. That's 2299425. Is that the only bid? Mm -hmm. I ask that you, well, yeah, you can accept the reading to the bids, but we couldn't move forward with the project yeah, until we'll, more funds. Uh, take move with approving the bid um, and take under advisement. Yes, sir. I make. You'll come back and talk to us about it? Yes, sir. I would have to. There's not enough money. I'll make that motion. Second. All right. Questions from the audience? Council, please cast your vote. Motion carries. Witness opening of sealed bids for bid number P20-23 Melrose Extension to Plantation Drive. The engineer's estimate is $829,738 to come from the Riverboat Capital Projects. There was one addendum that provided the list of the attendees to the mandatory pre-bid meeting and provided questions and answers. This bid is from Ernest Contracting, LLC. The bid bond is included. They acknowledge the addendum. It's for $902,429.05. 902-429-05. Same thing, please approve the reading of the bid and will be taken under advisement. Make that motion. Second. <clears throat> Questions from the audience? Council, please cast your vote. Motion carries. Witness opening of sealed bids for bid number P20-24 East Texas Industrial Drive Sewer Rehab Project. The, bid, the engineer's estimate is $1,214,000 from the Sewer Capital and Contingency Fund. There is one addendum that provided a list of attendees to the mandatory pre-bid meeting, revised the Louisiana bid form, provided changes to the spe specs and questions and answers. There is, are three alternates. The first bid is from David Lawler Construction, Inc. He acknowledged the addendum. The bid bond is included. 
The base bid is $329,065, 327, I think I said it wrong, $327,065, 327,065. Alternate one is for $317,310, 317,310. Alternate two is $519,125, 519,125. And alternate three is for $67,025, 67,025. The next bid is from Dixie Overland Construction, LLC. They acknowledge the addendum, the bid bond is included. The base bid is $383,690, 383690. Alternate one is $539,463, 439463. Alternate two is $526,770, 526770. And alternate three is 94442. Nine four 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 two. Stacy, I'm sorry. Can you read alternate one back on that one? On the Dixie Overland. Yes, ma'am. Alternate one is five hundred thirty-nine thousand four hundred sixty-three dollars. Okay, thank you. The next bid is from Horseshoe Construction Inc. They acknowledge the addendum. The bid bond is included. The base bid is $315,711.50, 315,711.50. Alternate one is $320,701, 320,701. Alternate two is $283,685, 283,685. And alternate three is 55,187, 55,187. And the last bid is from Pulley Construction, Inc. They acknowledge the addendum, the bid bond is included. The base bid is for $401,180, 401,180. Alternate one is $385,530. 385530. Alternate two is 442,352 dollars. 442352. And alternate three is 79,265 dollars. 79265. I ask that you accept the reading of these bids. So moved. Second. Questions from audience? Council, please cast your vote. Motion carries. Introduce an ordinance to adopt the general fund budget for 2021. First reading. Mr. President, I'd like to make a motion we combine items 4 through 22 on the budget. Second. Questions from the audience? All right. Council, please cast your vote. Motion carries. Do we need to make a mo motion to, I can make a motion to introduce the 20, 2021 operating and capital budget. Second. Any questions from the audience? Council, please cast your vote. Motion carries. That brings us to item number 23 on the agenda. Introduce an ordinance to declare certain movable equipment owned by the city of Bossier City as surplus to the city's need and provide for donation to the Turkey Creek Police Department in accordance with law. First reading. For me. Second. Questions from the audience? Council, please cast your vote. Motion 
motion carries. Introduce an ordinance to appropriate $22,880 from the Plantation Drive Waterline Project to reimburse Dr. J. Turner the funds expended to extend an existing eight inch water main to the east side of his property with a fire hydrant, first reading. So move. Second. Any questions from the audience? Questions from the council? Please cast your vote. Motion carries. Introduce an ordinance to authorize the mayor to ex execute an act of donation to accept a certain tract of land on Viking Drive owned by the Bossier Parish Police Jury. First reading. So moved. Second. Second. Questions from the audience? Council, please cast your vote. Motion carries. Introduce an ordinance to fund Gay Street Pump Bypass at a cost of $20,000 to come from the Sewer Capital and Contingency Fund. First reading. So move. Second. Questions from the audience? Council, please cast your vote. Motion carries. Introduce an ordinance amending ordinance Chapter 6, Section 6-1, Number 22 of the Bossier City Code of Ordinances to amend the description of the Festival Plaza region to enlarge the area included. First reading. So moved. Second. Second. Questions from the audience? Council, please cast your vote. Motion carries. Introduce an ordinance amending ordinance chapter 6, section 6-1, number 22 of the Bossier City Code of Ordinances to amend the description of Festival Plaza region. First reading. So moved. Second. Second. Questions from the audience? Council, please cast your vote. Motion carries. Introduce an ordinance approving the attached cooperative endeavor agreement by and among the Red River Waterway District, the City of Bossier City, and the City of Shreveport for the installation of a programmable LED light system on the Texas Street Bridge and authorizing Mayor Lorenz Walker to execute the same. First reading. So moved. Second. Questions from the audience? I got one for you. Yes, sir. Jimmy, is, is, is Bossier City going to have any... Uh, be responsible for any maintenance or anything on that bridge at all? There's a theoretical possibility of it, but, you know, the LED light systems have very low maintenance now. I mean, they last, the both last a long time, and the IT department in Shreveport's going to handle the, uh, the operation of the light. So, I mean, we have a responsibility on the agreement for maintenance, but I, I believe it to be a minimal exposure that we have. I got a question, Mr. Hall. Uh, on this agreement, we're accepting a million dollars from the uh, waterway uh, as a contribution to this. But if during this 20 year agreement, something happens to this project and we shut it down, say halfway through, then we're going to be responsible for reimbursing the waterway back for 50,000 a year on how many years are remaining on the agreement. We're gonna how's that gonna be split between Shreveport and Bozier? Well what we actually would owe them is we stop somewhere in the in the process is uh, we owe them a million dollars back, but it it, it takes off fifty thousand dollars a year that it's in operation. So whatever that reduces to and it would be a fifty fifty split between us and Shreveport. Is that I mean I just don't really understand that fifty fifty split as being I mean, we're two different sized cities. We're both going to benefit from this, but uh, the uh, the city of Bossier being responsible for the same amount that Shreveport is responsible. I'm not sure that 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 is a fair breakdown. Well, I mean, the, it was given to the city of Bossier and the city of Shreveport. The million dollars was. In, in equal proportion, you know, so it's, it is the amount that's going to go towards the installation 
of the Dr. Barkowski and his wife have donated a million dollars for the purchase of the lights and a million dollars from the Waterway Commission is for the design and installation of the of the lights on the on the deal but I mean obviously the Commission chose to give the million dollars to the city of Shreveport and the city of Bossier so in theory they would I'm sure expect uh, either of us to uh, be responsible for 50 percent of that that's why they included Bossier in it don't see it as a equitable 50-50 uh, on this. So. Noted for the record. Any other discussion? Council, please cast your vote. Mr. Darby? Well, I voted for yay. I don't, I don't know what happened to my... There it is. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Introduce an ordinance. Motion carries. Introduce an ordinance to reappropriate $171,900 from Ordinance 73 of 2020, the Police Building and Public Works Complex Lighting Projects, to Ordinance 72 of 2020, the CenturyLink Center Lighting Project, first reading. So moved. Second. Questions from the audience? Mr. President, can I go back? Yes, sir. Can I go back on the last one? Sure. I mean, th that is the first reading on it, so we have time to, right, look into with the talk to the Waterway Commission and. Yeah, I mean, I mean to be. I mean, what, what, would be the, what would be the reason, to, I guess, to stop or they shut down or anything like that? Uh, for it to be shut down? I don't think there is a reason. I mean, we, we put a force majeure clause in there, and, and I've drafted them. A, a bunch of them and put them in contracts, but in this this force majeure contracts act of God, it, it states you know for civil unrest a reality that could happen, okay. war a reality that could happen, uh, pandemic a reality that could happen, epidemic that could happen. So th you know there are clauses in there that that allow us to delay. For one, uh, it's a high end lighting system that they've sought out. I mean it's one of the best around, but it comes from China. So, you know, the, the, the concern is it may be a longer period of time than what was originally projected. The project had to be done by the end of 2021. Well, obviously, we may have to go back to them and say we, we, the date of completion has to be extended because the product won't be here. But I don't really think that there's a likelihood of it, of it being shut down. I mean, you know, I, I think a lot of people look at the lighting system that was on there before. It was old school lighting. This is, this is state of the art. And there, there is, are places in the country that have had LED lights and they came to this system because it's, it's pretty prolific. And I think it's gonna be a, a great draw to the city. I mean, I, 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 it's got capable program lighting uh, scenarios into it that are canned in it, but they can, uh, they can uh, light change it. Change the colors of. Yeah, they could change the colors to purple and gold during the national championship game or LSU night. People can pay for that to raise money to offset the maintenance costs if if there are any. So uh, there's a, there's uh, ways that they thought of that uh, could create sustainable uh, monetary uh, contributions. They've already raised some contributions uh, towards that. So. I, I think I think the likelihood of it of it failing is after I talked to the people. I was very concerned when I first saw it, but after talking, Pam uh, got together the people from Shreveport, and we talked to them about how it's going to be handled. And I, I really believe it's going to be a a benefit to the community, and you know it'll be something that draws people here at just in and of itself. But uh, but the, the the main thing is, and we all know this. We you know look at all the projects we've done in the garage and at CenturyLink. You, you know the difference in LED lights and the longevity of them and the lack of maintenance on them is way different than the lighting system that was on that bridge before. You know, I talked to somebody today, and you, you know who it is, of course, that for the first five years there's not going to be any harm, and uh, nobody's responsible for it. And after that, the uh, Shreveport. Uh, Oh, golly, I can't think of the thing, the name of it. Um, anyway, they're going to be responsible for all the maintenance, but they also can, like you said, raise money 
if somebody has a baby and they want to do a gender review over the lights on the bridge or this or that, you know, the, the two teams playing in the Independence Bowl, they can pay for that and raise money. But uh, I wish I could think of them. You know what I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah but I know what you're talking about. Yeah. Freeport Arts. I've heard they've got this stuff called Prevagen. A lot of advertising. <laughs> I just, it might work. I don't know. I haven't <laughs> tried it yet. But. Tell my wife that because she said the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm done. <laughs> Any further discussion? Council, please. <laughs> <laughs> Cast your vote. <clears throat> Motion carries. Introduce an ordinance to conduct repairs to the Shed Road and Meadowview Drive gravity mains at a cost of $459,000 to come from the Sewer Capital and Contingency Fund. First and final reading. So moved. Second. Questions from the audience? Council, please cast your vote. Motion carries. Adopt a resolution to adopt the five-year capital projects plan. First and final reading. So moved. Second. Questions from the audience? Council, please cast your vote. Could I bring something up before Oh, I'm we, sorry. That's yes, sir. Okay. Uh, I noticed the uh, airline drive underpass is still on there. Is that something where I've... Uh, that's done. That's... Did we appropriate that money? Yes, we did. We did. We did, did, a, we did a ten thousand dollars study with the same people that did but it. We appropriated the ten thousand dollars. That's what I meant to say. I apologize. And we got the same result back as we did twenty years ago when we had it done. So what was that result? Uh, I can't idea. do it. Okay, then. <laughs> so we yeah. haven't appropriated the twelve million, the estimated cost or anything. Twelve million. Yeah. Well, yeah, I'd multiply that million. times ten based yeah. on yeah. what the carriageways costing so another waste of ten thousand dollars well mayor if you want to you can yeah take that off i don't think that's a viable project anymore so let's not let that come up again okay what <laughs> do another study on it on this no uh, yeah on the of uh, the airline drive project let's, let's, the underpass yeah let's do another study okay I hope you're being sarcastic. <laughs> Otherwise, I'm going to buy the not let it happen for you. Okay. Mr. Friesa, would you like to add that to your motion with the add the deletion of the airline drive underpass? I would love to add that to my motion. Thank you. Deletion Mr. Of Williams? Is that okay? To second. Second. Thank second. Yeah. All right. Any questions from the audience regarding that amendment to the five year capital projects plan? Council, please cast your vote. Motion carries. We need a motion to no? No, I okay. included it in the motion. All right. Public hearing for Bossier City's 2021 Consolidated Plan and CPG <clears throat> Action Plan for Application for Community Development Block Grant Funds. Good council. Here Afternoon, I am back Bob. again. Hadn't been that long since I was here on, on the last one, but um, this is the same kind of a deal. We're an entitlement city, so we get a certain amount of money each year, and it's it's based on the amount appropriated by Congress and then divided up by uh, a formula in the law, and we don't know what we're going to get until they've done what they need to do. So, But uh, we have a we come up with an annual action plan, which is what we need. It's a list of the projects that we'll have to um, spend the money when we do get it. And uh, it's on that sh that, um, app that uh, plan I gave you there. The, the second page in there is uh, the list of the projects, if you're interested in those. Um, we have 15 projects, well, 16 projects, actually, this year that we'll be spending the money on. Yes, sir. That's about all I have, unless you want to go over projects. <laughs> well, thank you, Bob, as always. It's always good to see you. Thank you. <laughs> Since this is a public hearing, is there any comment?
If not, we'll close the public hearing. Adopt a resolution supporting the city's application to the United States Department of Housing and Urban Development for funding under entitlement status under authority of Title I of the Housing and Community Development Act of 1974. First and final reading. So moved. Second. Questions from the audience? Council, please cast your vote. Motion carries. Adopt a resolution authorizing the hiring of a utility worker for public utilities. First and final reading. So moved. Second. Questions from the audience? Council, please cast your vote. Motion carries. Approved report of change order first and final for 2019 citywide concrete repairs. An increase of $33,681.33. Total of contract with increase $1,200,296.33. So move. Second. Questions from the audience? Council, please cast your vote. Motion carries. Approve appointment of Carrie Landry to the Metropolitan Planning Commission Board of Adjustments as an alternate term effective September 22nd, 2020 and will expire September 21st, 2025. Mr. Mr. President, Mr. Landry is here. Would you like to have him say a word? Oh, yes, sir. Now I recognize you. There you do. <laughs> Good afternoon, Council. My name is uh, Carrie Landry, and I look forward to serving on the Metropolitan Planning Commission. Any Address questions? for your rec for the record, please, sir. Two hundred six Vermilion Place, seven eleven twelve. Thank you for agreeing to that, Mr. Landry. We appreciate your service very much. My pleasure. Thank you. I don't have a motion or a second yet, sir. Mo I'm going to make that motion. Second. Any questions from the audience? Council, please cast your vote. Motion carries. Adopt a resolution certifying off-system bridge program compliance for 2020 and 2021 for the Bossier City for the city of Bossier City, Louisiana, first and final reading. So moved. Second. Any questions from the audience? Council, please cast your vote. <clears throat> did it not come up? It did. Motion carries. Approved report of change order number one for the East Bank restrooms project with an increase of $29,711 for a contract price with change order $387,711 and adding an additional 29 days to the contract time. So moved. Second. Questions from the audience? Council, please cast your vote. Up, nope. Yeah. Mr. Free, did yours come up, Mr. Williams? It did. Motion carries. Agenda items are due October 2nd for the next meeting, which will be October the 6th. All righty. And also, uh, Mayor, on behalf of the council, we uh, in two weeks would like to make a special presentation to you and the fire chief and the police chief, if you could have him, them here at the beginning of the meeting. So. And that is in two weeks. Yes, sir. It will be October 6th. All right. So no further business. Everyone have a great week.
meeting adjourned.